सर जैसा कि आप जानते हैं सेकंड वर्ल्ड वॉर की यानी कि द्वितीय विश्व युद्ध की कई वीडियोस पहले भी हम आपको दिखा चुके हैं और आज हम आपको एक सिपाही था जिसका नाम था सीमो हाया सीमो हाया हाया जी सर वो फिनलैंड का एक सिपाही था अच्छा उसकी स्टोरी हम दिखाने वाले हैं बहुत ही जाबाज वो सिपाही था अच्छा और किस तरीके से उसने एक कारनामा अंजाम दिया जिसकी वजह से आज पूरी दुनिया में लोग उसे याद करते हैं तो हम चाहते हैं कि आप उसकी स्टोरी को जाने समझे और उसकी जाबाजी की कहानी सुने और उसके बाद अपना फीडबैक साहब जब भी आप कह रहे हैं कि इतना बड़ा जाबाज आदमी उसने देश के लिए कुछ करा है तो वो वाकई में कुछ होगा साहब और हम भी उसको देखना चाहेंगे कि आखिर वो आदमी है कौन ये पूरी दुनिया में जब काम करा है तो फिर ना कुछ बड़े काम करा होगा जो करा दुनिया याद रख रही है बिल्कुल सर इस मुद्दे में तो मैं निःशब्द हूँ कुछ भी शब्द नहीं कहूंगा मैं तो सर पहले चीज को देखूंगा उसके बाद ही बात करूंगा सर When World War II broke out in 1939, the Soviet Union decided to invade Finland while everyone else was preoccupied with the war in Europe. But a sniper named Simo Heiha came to Finland's defense. Heiha allegedly eliminated a staggering 505 enemy soldiers, which, if accurate, would make him the deadliest sniper in history. Today we're looking at the man Simo Heiha and his unbelievable marksmanship. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. Simo would have wanted it that way. All right, let's get sniping. As you might imagine, the invading Soviet soldiers grew to be straight up terrified of Heiha, having to patrol the blanched Finnish wilderness with the knowledge that Heiha could be out there waiting to ping them with a spectacular long distance shot earned him the nickname Belia Smert. which is Russian for white death. However, Heiha's fellow Finnish soldiers had a completely different name for him. They called him Taika Ampuya, Magic Shooter. While that nickname may have been as accurate as Heiha himself, we have to admit it is somewhat less intimidating than white death. Simo's exact sniper count varies depending on the source. Some suggest he downed as many as 542 Soviet soldiers with his rifle, but no one claims he eliminated any less than 505. This makes him the most effective sniper in any war, with Soviet sniper Ivan Sidorenko sitting at a close second with 500 kills. However, Heiha's count may even be higher. Rather than stay at a comfortable distance behind his sniper rifle, Heiha may have also cut down several hundred enemy combatants with a submachine gun. If true, that would put his count at approximately 800. Zemo, that is a frightening number. Impressive, sure, but. Holy cow! You're really good at your job. The winter war lasted for a single winter, as the name suggests, which means Heiha was putting in serious work. In order to achieve his staggering record, Heiha was eliminating an average of five to six enemy soldiers every day. Of course, some days were better than others. Heiha racked up a terrifying 40 confirmed kills in a single day, scoring 25 and 20 on two other record days. A cloud of perpetual death in which he lived saw him promoted from corporal to second lieutenant, the biggest rank jump in the history of Finland's military. Heiha did not use a scope to forge his legendary sniper count. He preferred to use a plain old iron sight on his rifle. Yeah, no scope. He's just an all-around old-fashioned badass. Never being hard to beat, there was a strategic advantage beyond just showing off. Heihau uh, recognized that scopes made his enemies an easy target. Uh, in addition to making the target uh, slightly bigger, scopes would glint in the sunlight, allowing Heihau uh, to spot enemy snipers before they uh, spotted him. At the time, uh, every Finnish citizen was required to do one year of military uh, service, and Heihau had done his 14 years earlier, back in 1925. That was the extent of his military experience. He did join the Finnish Civil Guard as reservist, which is essentially the equivalent to the U.S. National Guard. But he stuck to his civilian life of hunting and farming right up until the Soviets decided to invade in 1939. At which point he was summoned back to service. If his hunting record was anything like his war record, we suspect the deer around Heihau's home had a nickname for him too. After he completed his year of mandatory service in 1925, Heihau was given the option to purchase his service weapon, a standard bolt-action rifle. He bought the gun and spent the next decade and a half mastering it. 
When he was called back to duty during the Winter War, Hayes opted his old bolt action rifle, turning down a more modern rifle with advanced optics. The extreme cold, which ranged anywhere from minus 20 to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, caused frequent weapon malfunctions among his fellow soldiers. But Hayes' experience with his bolt action BFF allowed him to keep the gun functional throughout the winter. While only having minimal military experience, Heihau wasn't possessed by the Lord of Incredible Aim. He developed his skill from being a competitive sharpshooter, having grown up a few miles away from the Civil Guard shooting range, which held annual contests. Heihau regularly participated in these competitions, packing his house full of trophies. Among his accomplishments was the ability to hit a target with his rifle 16 times in a minute at a range of 500 feet, the talent best described as supernatural. Heihau was deployed to the Kola battlefield, where he and 31 other soldiers were tasked with holding off an invading force of 4,000 Soviet troops. Despite having fewer men on the roster than a college football team, Heihau's group managed to hold their ground for the entire winter. That's some good goal line defense right there. He and his fellow Finns had a few other advantages beyond his angel of death status as a sniper. For instance, the Soviet troops all wore bright green uniforms, which made them stand out like decorated Christmas trees against the snowy white oh, landscape. Oh, oh, oh. All they the Soviets was they lacked officers with any leadership skills, mainly because Stalin had them all executed when he purged the USSR of any potential yeah, yeah, political opponents. And even though the Soviet invasion of Finland was technically successful, they only managed to capture a relatively small amount of border territory, leaving the rest of the country yeah. intact. All told, oh, yes, yes, the yes, Soviets yes. suffered nearly 400,000 casualties during the Winter War, compared to the 66,000 suffered by Finland. Most snipers shoot while lying flat on their stomachs because it gives enemies a smaller target to aim at. Heihau fired from a sitting position because he felt the position was better for his aim. He didn't worry too much about making himself a bigger target as he was just a biscuit over five feet tall who would conceal himself in snowbanks and put snow in his mouth to hide his breath. Additionally, Heihau would pack snow in front of his rifle barrel or pour water on it to freeze it so that smoke would not rise from it after he fired and give away his position. And in perhaps the biggest departure from sniper etiquette, rather than going for the head, Heihau aimed for the center mass of his targets, which is effective in wartime but won't do him any favors on the Black Ops 4 leaderboards. Heihau's reputation as the John Wick of Finnish snipers eventually drew the ire of the Soviet commanders, who finally grew tired of his nonsense and began targeting him directly. Because getting anywhere near Heihau was out of the question, they began hammering his general location with artillery strikes. When those didn't work, the Soviets sent teams of counter-snipers to take him out, but Heiha, being the sniper's sniper, dispatched them with bone-chilling ease. Finally, one Soviet sniper got lucky and blasted Heiha in the jaw with an exploding round. Despite being described by one friend as having half of his head missing, Heiha refused to die, and after days of reconstructive surgery, he finally regained consciousness, the day after the Winter War had ended. Despite getting a portion of his face blown entirely off his dome in a time when medicine was still largely experimental, Heihau survived World War II and went back to hunting and farming. The Finnish government actually gave him a farm in 1961, presumably both to reward him for his service and they probably wanted to stay on his good side. Heihau took up dog breeding and continued hunting, winning the Rookalati Hunting Society's Game Cup five years in a row. In 1970, he moved into a small apartment where he uh, lived out the rest of his days before passing away at age 96 yeah. in 2002. Uh, That's yeah, right, the deadliest yeah. sniper in World War II lived long enough to have been yeah, 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 Simo Heha left his quiet farm life in the winter of 1939 to become the most effective sniper in history, racking up over 500 confirmed kills without even using a scope before returning home to live out the rest of the 20th century in peace. What do you think of the White Death? Let us know in the comments and check out some of these other videos on our weird history.
सर वाकई में हम वीडियो देखी देख के वाकई में बहुत अजीब अच्छा लगा वो सब ये जो बंदा है ये जो भी इसका नाम हो वाकई में इस सब में इसकी बहादुरी की किस से बहुत पगड़ी थी कि इस अकेले बंदे ने के अकेले को कैसे अकेले बिना गुरबिन के वो बिना किसी उसके निशान लगा लगा कि नहीं हाल तो सिपाहियों को मुल्क को घर से चला और इतनी हम बहादुरी से उसे लड़ने के बाद भी ये ये सब वो वाकई में आज भी वो मेरे को कह लूँ इसकी बहादुरी को वाकई में दर्द होता हूँ उसकी मैं सलाम करता हूँ बहादुरी तो थी वाकई में बंदे ने क्योंकि अकेला घबराया नहीं हूँ नहीं घबराया उसके साथ भी साथी थे पर वो अकेले ने काम कर दिखाया वाकई में कि पाँच को मौत के हाथ उतार दिया हमारे वहाँ पांच सौ शादी में आते नहीं कि भीड़ के भीड़ लगती इसलिए लगती भीड़ टूट गई उन अकेले ने निपटा दिया वो भी बिना दूरबीन के सर दो चीजें वहां पर सबसे ज्यादा खतरनाक लगी एक तो सर्दी एक तो सर्दी और दूसरी कि जब वो गोली चलाते तो धुआं निकलता है वो दो मुश्किलों से उसने वक्त गुजारा वो पांच लोगों को मारा के मतलब मैं देख रहा था बहुत गोर से कि मुंह में बर्फ रखा उसने कि मेरा सांस की आवाज तक नहीं निकले मतलब कितना बारीक मिशन होगा ये मतलब आर्मी वालों के सेना वालों के जो है कि मिशन बड़े सुने लेकिन ये जो इतना बारीक मिशन कि जो उधर वाले उनके सबके हाथ में पिस्टल है बंदू के एक गोली मर सकता है ये लेकिन इस अकेले बंदे ने और वो उधर वाले परेशान होगा हाँ, ये है किधर ये <laughs> दूर से निशाना तो मार दिया लेकिन उनका भी अंदाजे होते हैं कि मार किस तरफ से रिया वो पकड़ नहीं पाए मतलब सर उसकी मौत अगर वहां होती तो सर वही आ जाती उसकी मौत नहीं थी वहां पर उसने मारा वो छन्नो साल की उम्र में जो है कि सर मतलब अपना उसने जो है कि आखिरी सांस ली सर सर वो चार हजार और ये इकतीस मुकाबला ही नहीं हो पा रही है एक प्रतिशत और निन्यानवे प्रतिशत बहुत बड़ी बात है फिर भी हिम्मत देखी वो हिम्मत देखी उसके बाद भी लेटा रहा हो और एक ने उस जबाड़ा जो देखा आखिरी जबाड़े पर गोली लगी गोली लग गई थी तिरछा हो गया बेचारा वो उसी के साथ सर सेना वालों के लिए बहुत दिल से सम्मान है यार मतलब ये बात तो है ये लोग जो है उनके लिए ना शोक रखते हैं ना मौज रखते हैं इनको सिर्फ देश की रहता मसला ना जिंदगी और मौत सबसे कीमती चीज है जिंदगी वो दाव पे लगाते हैं तो सर इनसे बड़ा सम्मान तो मैं समझता हूँ देश में किसी लोगों का होना भी नहीं चाहिए नहीं सही है देश पे जान निशा बच्चों को बच्चों, बच्चों का खेल नहीं है कि जिंदगी अपने दाव पे लगा दे हर इंसान को जिंदगी प्यारी होती है तो सेना वाले को सलाम है जो मरना वतन पे जाने ए वतन ए वतन हमको तेरी कसम तेरी नागुन जाएंगे ए क्या चीज है तेरे कदमों पे हम बैठ अपनी सरों की चढ़ा जाएंगे Oh. Oh.